Live streaming is on. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Event Trader coming on here. Uh, we just finished up with the NVIDIA analyst day. There wasn't a ton of financial information released in it. it was some talking about the TAM that's out there, um, which is obviously very subjective at the moment. But uh, still, markets certainly seem to be reacting favorably to it. And uh, that's the backdrop that we got coming in on the intraday basis. Obviously, we got a couple of big events still to come with the Fed and uh, Micron earnings, as well as Nike and uh, Lulu and FedEx after hours on Thursday. So uh, with that backdrop, we are going to be inviting in Brandon Mars, options trader here. Talk a little bit about the broader markets, some of his trades, and uh, also some of the names that he was looking at from the NVIDIA conference. So without any further ado, Brandon, how are you doing today? I'm excellent. How are you, Gavin? I can't complain. Uh, just kind of trying to get everything organized here. Uh, getting ready for that Fed day tomorrow. Did play a little short in uh, the markets just to have something in on that side of things. Uh, it seems to be going in a sideways chop over the last 20, 30 minutes. I was looking at um, figuring that maybe once NVIDIA crossed, perhaps we could see some of that selling pressure that we saw at the beginning of the day come back in. But so far, not so much. So uh, first question I'd have for you is, how do you see this pattern unfolding in the middle of the day? And then we'll kind of peel back the onion and take a little bit of a longer look uh, at the markets and what you're seeing out there. Yeah, it's been a little bit of an interesting day as you and I were just talking about um, kind of a, in my opinion, a cute move this morning, if you will, um, after NVIDIA just seems like they had the algos just kind of set to to sell across the board and you know hey all of a sudden now nvidia is magically up you know one percent and some of the tech names are, are starting to to creep into the green so um you know like i told you i i had listened to the nvidia keynote yesterday and you know i, I barely know how to turn on a computer when it comes to my tech skills um so some of it was gibberish to me but uh i was very impressed you know it and it, it, I put this in my notes this morning. I mean, it, it's kind of scary to me to say this, but that company just almost seems like it's just getting going. I mean, they've got some exciting stuff and, you know, I'm not, I'm not big on like graphics and stuff, but some of their videos I was very impressed by and, you know, it just seemed like, uh, you know, some fuel to the fire. And I guess we got a little bit of a, a sell the news, but, um, you know, got some got some green kicking around. My list has gone from, you know, pretty red this morning to about 50 percent in the green. So, you know, a little bit of a grain of salt with the Fed coming up tomorrow because uh, that can always be a little bit of a wild card. But, uh, you know, feeling kind of bullish at the moment. All right. I mean, you've pretty much been in call buying mode. Um, for the last few weeks, which has, of course, been the right call. So uh, just kind of looking out, what are you, are you kind of following the NASDAQ a little bit more, the S&P? Is there certain sectors you're watching here? Um, and uh, what are you seeing on that front, if so? Yeah, I mean, pretty much today, I'm pretty much just focused on on the NASDAQ. Um, you know, I, I kind of felt like we'd have a little bit of a sell the news off of NVIDIA, kind of no matter what they said, and that we'd see some buyers step in. Um, and that's what we're seeing. So kind of focused on those, um, I guess, minus maybe my target trade. Um, you know, that one got onto my radar just as uh, one of my favorite post earnings setups that we'll, we'll go into here. And I, I just kind of wanted to have one thing on the radar that was uh, non-tech related today. So hence uh, the, the random target in uh, a bunch of my tech names. Okay. Um, let's see. What would be a concern for you that would maybe flip you to the bearish camp? Like what, what keeps you up at night on uh, in terms of being a uh, bullish? Oh, what keeps me up at night? I feel like that's a loaded question these days. Um, <laughs> what what doesn't keep you up at night, right? The only you get everything keeps you up at night. Exactly. But um, like, like I, in, in terms of just charts, uh, you, you know, not looking for you to break down the Fed meeting tomorrow or anything along those lines. But um, 
you, you know, levels that if you saw something uh, kind of react that would grab your attention, I suppose. Yeah, for me in the NASDAQ, it's it's really that 20 day. Um, you know, we've been kind of hanging out around that, consolidating for the whole month, really. And, you know, it kind of just keeps holding it and, you know, making bounces off of it. And, you know, again, I think tomorrow will be the big deciding factor of, you know, which way we break out of the consolidation. But, you know, we keep getting buyers in there. You know, again, today, dip down below it a little bit. You got a wick on the uh, the bottom of the daily candle and the NQs, you know, again, showing buyers stepping in. So, you know, again, we, we've seen this multiple times now in the last few months where you get a little bit of a dip below that 20 day. And the next thing you know, I think they trap some bears and we shoot higher. So it would be a sustained break of that. And we just, we really haven't seen it. Okay. Um, well, we'll keep an eye out on that, obviously. And, uh, you know, I'm sure if something unfolds on that realm, you'll be uh, the first to let us know. So uh, let's move in then and talk about some of the trades that you got out there, Brandon. Um, I'm pretty sure everything's on the uh, call side for the three names that you're involved, correct? Correct. Uh, so the first one, Alphabet, uh, G-O-O-G-L. Uh, to be clear, you are in the L's, right, Brandon? I am in the L's. So, um, which is, of course, the voting shares. Had a nice pop on the Bloomberg story that Apple and Alphabet are potentially in discussions. Um, everything I was seeing was that if something was officially announced, it would most likely come in Apple's uh, June WWDC conference, their uh, web developer conference. So, uh, But Apple certainly got a nice pop from it. Or uh, Alphabet, I should say, certainly got a nice pop for it. Up to that 152 level, which, uh, you know, if we're looking at it on the daily here, kind of matches up with those February highs and setting up as a resistance area. That's from the gap down to kind of coming into play here at a little bit of a higher level following their Q4 earnings report, of course, which disappointed. But what was it in alphabet that you saw that you liked and uh let me ask you this whenever whenever i'm trading a pop i'm always kind of following the island and i'm uh, just curious if you're a little nervous of it falling below yesterday's uh lows and how you look at that on a chart yeah i mean definitely we've talked about those islands a few times before on these calls and i think we're in a, in agreement in how we would uh we would analyze them um yeah, like you said, I mean, it obviously hit my radar yesterday with a real nice pop. And, you know, it just it pulled back a little bit. And, you know, it seemed like it was uh, you know, going to make a turn higher. And, you know, unfortunately, I was just wrong on that call. And, you know, this morning um, saw some interesting buying, actually. At one point when everything was was down quite a bit, it was actually up about half a percent in the pre-market. And, you know, I think the market makers love to torment me a little bit and let a stock be up in the pre-market and then just let it, you know, immediately dump, um, which is always fun at <laughs> 6.30 in the morning on the, right. uh, the West Coast. Um, but actually, what also really put this on my radar outside of uh, yesterday's move was if we go and take a look at the weekly chart, um, this is essentially, this is all the way going back to call it October, November of 2022. The weekly chart kind of has this big cup and handle that has been formed. And, you know, over the last couple of weeks, going back to really the end of January has been the handle. And, you know, it actually almost looks like a, a flag pattern as well. And, you know, in the week of the fourth, you kind of had that uh, that doji candle there with the long wick. And that just seemed like the, the end of the, the flag pattern and the potential resumption higher. And, you know, we've got we got that move. Um, so that's kind of what really threw it on my radar. And then. Yeah, just had that real nice move higher and, you know, I kind of saw it pulling back and wanted to jump on it. And, you know, I still I still like this. I mean, I, I actually think that this has made a pretty good little I, I won't do anything else with it. Just I don't want to 
I don't want to make a, a, a bad decision, if you will, um, just from already having a trade out there. But it's built a pretty nice little base all day. I've, I've been watching it all day. And, you know, it's it's just now trying to come off of that 147 level. So, you know, it could, it could actually be an interesting candidate here um, to play a little catch up into the close today. Yeah. Okay. So um, we'll be watching that, but I like that call. Um, just expanding back this back down. So uh, Google is one name. Another name that you have on there, uh, certainly seen a little bit of selling pressure today is AMD. Obviously, some concerns about them falling behind the eight ball when it comes uh, to NVIDIA stock. As you can see here, that green line is the 50 day moving average. It's bounced off that test of it. And, uh, you know, we just kind of see that intraday activity here's a 30 minute um some heavy selling into the 50 but again bouncing off that so uh brandon what was it that interests you about amd so i had this on my radar of looking at the the daily chart um we had that consolidation kind of from the end of january up until about the end of february actually and, and you got that real nice breakout that started on the 29th and then you had a little bit of a pullback here to actually retest the, the breakout area. So just from a chart perspective, um, you know, that's that can be a really good technical setup. So I had it on my radar yesterday and uh, intraday, it actually had a, a real nice pennant pattern formed. And yeah, again, with just, I don't know, I guess with AMD, there's kind of two sides of it where, you know, NVIDIA can add fuel to the fire of the whole AI thing. But at the same time, NVIDIA could come out and, you know, say our new chip is 10 times better than AMD and put it under pressure. Um, but, you know, again, I think that this is probably, we'll call it a cute move, in my opinion. Um, you know, nice little bounce off the 50 day. You've probably got some shorts that have jumped in there thinking that it didn't hold that breakout area. And, you know, again, those can be some of the best times to, to jump into a trade uh, just because you you trap some of the shorts and then you've got um, longs that get out, too. And, you know, they eventually get some some FOMO. So, you know, again, there's, there's probably some headlines to still hit out of NVIDIA, um, you know, maybe for better or for worse for AMD. But just from a, a technical perspective, I, I do like that chart setup. All right. Uh, the other name, you just fired this one off a little while ago. That's Target, TGT. Uh, this is edging up towards its session highs here. So good look and play at the moment on Target. Yeah, so Target actually has probably what's one of my favorite post-earnings setups. And I'm looking at the daily chart. So, again, you get a real nice gap up after earnings, and then you've got some some profit taking that comes in, but it's, you know, basically creates a flag pattern. And on the selling level, um, on the way down, the volume was lower than on the way up. So, you know, again, we're just kind of seeing less pressure there on the selling side as we get some profit taking. Uh, what really put it on my radar was that hammer candle on the 13th. So again, you get that pullback and then you get the hammer candle on the 13th that was on about 50% more volume um, than the pullback. So those are the types of things that I like to look for. And then, you know, you did get a little bit of pressure in the overall market, so brought it down a little bit more. And then, uh, you know, real nice move yesterday, which is kind of what put it on my radar again. And yeah, again, just watching it intraday um, was kind of playing around that 167 and a half area and uh, kind of just saw some some volume and stuff coming into it. And then. I flipped over to the, uh, the XLP and saw some interesting activity there. So it just looked like it was going to go back up and, and start testing that 168 area again. And I got a pretty nice little breakout around uh, one o'clock. Um, options move from about 62 cents up to about 86, um, well, 83 if you're looking at the bid, excuse me. Um, 
so yeah, probably getting close to, you know, hopefully taking a little bit off the table there and, uh, you know, looking for a move to the 170 area. All right. So we're at 168.25 here. Um, this is what, what uh, Brandon and I were talking about earlier, the bottom of um, the range from that island on the initial gap up was 165.21, right? And uh, as Brandon said, got down below it on the 15th and back above here. So that's looking good because you got to figure, Brandon, there's probably a lot of people trying to short it to fill that gap. I mean, I would have, I'm shocked that it didn't come down and test the 20 day moving average there. So certainly seems like some buyers are helping push that back afloat. So I'd like that little tail at the back there. Uh, some names that you had thrown on your radar, Microsoft, MSFT, you've uh, been watching that. I know you trade it frequently. It's kind of just sitting around straddling that 420 area there. Um, you know, this was a level that prov provided a little bit of resistance back in the early days of February. So uh, what is it you're looking at here in Microsoft and what could get you involved in a play? Yes, Microsoft, um, you know, that one actually looked like it was becoming a, a pretty good put candidate there. And then all of a sudden, um, just ripped higher. And yeah, playing right at that 420 level. So Kind of went from a, a put candidate, in my opinion, to uh, a quick move higher above the 20 day. And, you know, it's just been kind of testing that 420 level. And, you know, again, a, any sort of tech name, um, you know, might have a little bit of fuel to the fire um, if anything comes out of the NVIDIA conference. And, uh, yeah, it's it's been trading pretty strong today, actually. So showing some strength. Uh, you know, it looks like it's pulling back in here a little bit, but you know, if that thing closes above the the 420 level, um, I would imagine that this would be a pretty good little breakout candidate here in the next week or two. All right, there's Microsoft right around the 420, coming up to uh, April 20th too. So whether it's Earth Day, Hitler's birthday, or a marijuana reference, that they, that's going to be on everybody's focus, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep an eye out on that. Is that where uh, Elon Musk wants to buy it? <laughs> was, was that where he wanted to go private for uh, Tesla back in the day? Uh, but, yeah, I think you're right, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Home Depot, another name. Now, you had this one on your put radar, if I recall. Yeah. Uh, so, this um, is a. What is a, it you're seeing here? That was kind of a scenario where it kind of came off of my list pretty quickly. Because um, it was based on the housing data, you were saying, correct? Yeah, it was based on housing data. And then, um, you know, this is also one that I always find to be somewhat interesting um, when we're seeing a, um, a spike in rates. So, you know, we had a little bit of a pullback here in rates this morning and good housing data. So, you know, for me, that kind of just came off my radar pretty quickly. Um, yeah, it had broken below that 20 day with a pretty bearish looking candle yesterday. And, you know, if if it had both a spike in rates and some bad housing data, you know, it seemed like that 50 day, um, you know, might come into play. But, yeah, again, both those things went against that idea. So I haven't even really looked at this one today, to be honest with you. All right. Well, we'll keep it on the radar anyway. Obviously, one one of the many that are dancing around this 20 day moving average, just such a popular area, which of course is always the case when you're getting a little bit of uncertainty in the markets and we, and uh, momentum starts to cool off. We have that 20 day get sucked up and kind of forces the issue at times. Right, Brandon? Yeah, no, it, it does. And you know, that's kind of one of the main things that I look at on every single chart is, you know, what's above and what's below the 20 day. And, you know, again, Going back to your question earlier of, you know, what might keep me up at night as a, as a bull, um, you know, if all of a sudden I start looking at a, a whole bunch of different charts and everything's dipping below that 20 day, that's, that's when the flags start uh, being raised for me. All right. Next up, we're going to go through a list of um, stocks that had been mentioned at video. I know. Uh, I have been talking about uh, the GTC conference last week, and I know you put together a nice list uh, in 
and uh, response to that of names that were presenting there. And then uh, yesterday, as you were listening to it, Brandon, I know you were jotting down some of the names and looking to circle back for potential plays, Google being one of them, of course. Uh, so that ended up on your list. But we're going to go through some of the other names that were on here. This is going to be a bit more of a speed round, just uh, kind of talking about the charts more so than the fundamentals. I don't think either one of us are in a position to exactly um, extrapolate what the monetary value is for the NVIDIA mention or partnership with any of these names. But just kind of looking at it from a technical perspective. And uh, Brandon, you tell me, what uh, time frame you want to look at these. But uh, first one we're going to take a look at is ANSS, which is uh, ANSYS. Um, hopefully my charts play ball with us here. <laughs> tough, tough, tough to do a speed around when your charts are kind of crapping out on you, right, Brandon? <laughs> um, all right. So uh, what are you seeing here? Tell me what time frame you want me to go off of. And, uh, you know, we can kind of stick to that. Yeah, I mean, probably just the daily right for yeah. everything would probably be pretty good for me. So um, looking at ANSS, uh, right off the bat for me, obviously, getting a little bit of straddling of that 20 and 50 day. Now, it looked like it was going in a downward channel, um, slight one, you know, a little bit of a descending triangle going into the 15th, bouncing off the bottom end of the Bollinger Band. And then obviously, you see a little bit of the pop from NVIDIA. So for me, Brandon, what like I'd be a little concerned myself on this chart like anytime you see a stock heading in one direction then you get a headline pop I'd, I'd be curious at how you kind of interpreted that as uh you're obviously much more savvy in the tech in the chart reading yeah so just real quick here i'm gonna post this to the room too i'm gonna take a little profit here on target um those calls are up about 50 percent now so about night move from about 62 cents up to about 90 right now so gonna take a little bit off the table here as uh hit your target no pun intended yeah <laughs> you really should do stand-up comedy <laughs> no, not with that not with that material but <laughs> um so a n s s yeah i mean a little bit of a consolidation here, right? Um, got that nice move higher, comes back in, maybe builds a base up above all of the moving averages. Um, you know, so I don't know. This one's kind of a, a choppy one, especially with the, the volume and everything. Um, you know, you, you would think, though, that with this news and you'd think it could break it out of that consolidation and that it would maybe at least start you know, test in, call it like the 345 area. Um, yeah, you got a MACD cross, your RSI's moved back above 50. Um, all the moving averages are, are below the, the current price. So, yeah, I mean, there's there's some interesting things on there. But like you said, anytime you kind of get that uh, that that pop off of the news, I, I always get just a little hesitant just because I, I frankly don't know, you know, how beneficial it is to the overall stock. And, you know, I just I don't know if this is a is a head fake for for the day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, this one would be a little bit trickier. Um, now, another name that was in their synopsis I've had is a long term holding for me, one of my uh, better buys back in the day um but obviously looking a little choppier here the last couple of uh weeks uh you know ever since back in uh late january when it got above the 50 it's been holding that level pretty solidly here on a couple of occasions i got tested at the end of february end of march or um, march 15th just a few days ago Another one that was seemed like it was getting ready to break below the 50 and perhaps given a lifeline by nvidia so uh, how do you see this matched up to that ANSS chart? I kind of like synopsis here. Um, you know, one thing, and you know, we've got two hours to go here, so this this could change. But one thing that I always like to look for, and especially if I was considering taking an overnight play on something, is the fact that that just has no wick at the top. 
And what you tend to find on these stocks, you know, if they get the news, they get the, some sort of momentum behind it. If you get to the end of the day and you don't have any wick at the top of the candle, you get a follow through on those names, you know, quite a bit. So, you know, I would think that it would at least go and test that 590 range. Right. I mean, there, there's probably going to be some pretty decent resistance there, but I would think that I'm, I'm guessing that gap up on the 20 seconds, probably from earnings. If I had to take a, yes. a guess, you know, you would think it, you would go and, and test that. Um, let's see here. It opened right at 589 spot 99. So, you know, you would think that that 590 level would come into play. Um, Taking a quick look here too, it's pretty thinly traded on the options front, but no surprise, uh, about 3.3 times normal call volume so far today. So, um, you know, again, this one's looking like it's headed towards a, a bullish uh, MACD cross, RSI is back above 50, all the moving averages are below it. So again, this, this one looks like it probably has a little bit of runway. All right. Taiwan Semi, TSM, another name out here. Uh, another one testing the 20-day moving average. Uh, another name that hit its highs right around the 8th and uh, been kind of in a downward channel since then. Um, would like to see that get back above the 20-day today, right? And close above there, Brandon? Yep, I would uh, I would agree. Um, yeah, see, that's, that's an interesting one. Um, you know, that gets the NVIDIA mention. Uh, it's underwater today, down below that 20-day. You know, really broke the trend line that it's had in place since, call it mid-January. Um, you know, never, never really a good thing. But what does intrigue me about that is sometimes those, as we've talked about, sometimes those dips below um, the major moving averages – you know, that can be the trap and it does have that long lower wick that's forming. You know, what I'd really like to see is that push a little bit higher and close above that 20 day and probably on some, some better volume. Cause that's just, that's what I look for of, you know, the market makers kind of accumulating around that key moving average before they, they shoot the thing higher. Yeah. All right. Next up cadence CDNS. Um, very similar chart from the ones we've been talking about here. Brandon was slipping below the 20 until it got a little NVIDIA lifeline. Yeah, this one kind of feels like the synopsis one. This one feels like it's maybe got a little bit of a runway too to, you know, maybe go test that, uh, that open from February 12th around the 315 area. So yeah, again, not a huge wick at the top. You got some pretty decent volume coming in. Um, this one just had a bounce off of the 50 RSI area, which is uh, something that I always look for. You know, if you've got a if you've got a stock that's been in a strong trend and then gets a little bit of a pullback, um, a bounce off of the the 50 RSI is something that I always look for. So you know that one. That one seems like it's got some opportunities too. And again, thinly traded on the options front, but about 2.3 times uh, the normal call volume today. So, yeah, you know, definitely seeing some some bullish signs in a couple of these names. I mean, again, no, no surprises, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, a, a lot of it headline related. So we'll see if that momentum continues through. Amazon, AMZN, uh, good looking chart here, I think, just kind of sitting on the 20. It's been holding it pretty nicely, um, forming another sideways trade right around that 174 to 180 area, really, over the last four weeks or so. Uh, what, what are you, what's your thoughts on Amazon? I know you trade this frequently. Yeah, Amazon's kind of interesting as, um, you know, through some of the selling that we've seen here and there, Um especially in some of the tech names, you know, it's, it's holding up there. It's got a nice little consolidation going. Um, so I, I do think Amazon's kind of interesting. You know, one thing I don't love is, you know, looking at some of my other technicals here, um, you've got a declining RSI and I actually, this is a, this is a divergence as I look at it. So I'm just looking here from just for, 
quick illustration purposes, uh, February 9th, and RSI is up above that 70 level. The candle closed that day at 174 and a half ish. And today we're at 175 and the RSI is now down at 55. Yeah. So that that's a pretty that's actually a pretty clearly defined uh, divergence on your RSI. So, you know, I think in these market environments where things are frothy, that those divergences can continue on for quite some time. But actually, if you add in that plus the MACD, you know, the MACD is actually the histograms below zero. And, you know, the, the MACD lines are, are, trending downward and they they look it would take some time but they look headed towards the the zero level so those are bearish things um you know but again in this market environment <laughs> take yeah. it with a grain of salt and uh i yeah, know that right. amazon is at nvidia too i don't know what kind of level or presentation they're doing so you got to kind of keep that one in the, the back of your mind too all right we got oracle here or cl I'm um, holding that island nicely. I wrote about this. Uh, you know, it, it's not terribly expensive and it's setting up for a nice little breakout here. So I would definitely be giving this one a thumbs up. Would you agree? Yeah, I like the Oracle story. Um, I I definitely did like what some of the stuff that they, I, I was a little under impressed by their earnings, to be honest with you. Well, I, and, and that's the thing though, right, Brandon? I mean, I, I agree with you. I was looking at that. I was looking at the guidance, but everybody was looking at the long-term outlook, their CapEx and just seemed to take to the story. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, that was definitely an impressive pipeline that they have, but I was reading some articles about them prior to their earnings and it was just talking about all the different investments that they were doing and some of the work they were doing i think it was with microsoft and it seemed like the pieces of the puzzle were in place for really a blowout report and didn't really get that but i don't know i guess that doesn't really matter right it's all about price action so um yeah no i i like this one um I, I i think that this one is is probably one again that's that's cheap and has a pretty good outlook and you know i i just i think that they are doing all the right things long term they just need to come out with one of those nice big blowout quarters like the other tech companies have had and and with healthcare, you know it's not like the baby boomer generation's getting any younger right exactly okay we talked microsoft uh service now N O W. N O W. This this is probably one of the uglier charts I I think because it's not getting back above that twenty and fifty. And now it's got the fifty added in that layer of uh, resistance. Yeah, so I'm looking at that, and you've got a convergence of the five, the ten, the twenty, and the fifty day moving average. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, again. You, you, I guess you get something and all of a sudden you could, you know, jump right over those like Microsoft recently did. But, you know, those are resistance points. You know, you're going to have people that are going to sell and and just there's going to be some sort of resistance there. So, you know, when I personally look at something like that and, you know, mainly because I'm, I'm trading options, you know, you want to have as much runway as possible. Um, you want to have as few resistance points or support points if you're, if you're shorting um, to get that runway. And, you know, for me, I look at that and I'm like, all right, this thing moved down on the 15th with a pretty, pretty bearish looking candle. And, you know, it's had two inside days now not really seeing that bounce like some of the others and you got a lot of resistance points and you know at this point it's it's only got two moving averages um below it so um you know that that seems like maybe more of a little bit of a put candidate all right we're in agreement there uh sap german software play here um had some definitely seen some movement back into european stocks so uh i'd like to set up for this one here brandon not so much to bounce off the 20 as some of the other names we've seen yeah I'm, I'm probably similar again probably want to see it get above that 20 but you know this is another one that just had a, a bounce off the 50 rsi area 
you know, you're kind of getting to a point on the MACD where it's kind of looking like a, a point that you would, you know, want to enter. Um, I don't love the, the five day that's kind of looping in and potentially pushing down on it. But yeah, again, I'd keep an eye on that, that 20 day, but overall this looks like a pretty constructive chart and, you know, it looks like it want to, wants to keep that trend line in place that it's had since the beginning of the year. And the, you know, if, if it kind of consolidates where it is now, you'd be talking about again, a higher low, from the last low around February 20th. And, you know, that would probably put the the highs of the year back into play if, if that's the case. All right. Then we got NTAP here, NTAP. Let's try to populate here. I got another one of those. Of course, right, 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 right when I lose my patience. Um, <laughs> so as you can see, nice pop on earnings there for NTAP uh, up to that 112 level. This has slowly been giving up those gains, fighting to hold above the 100 psych level right now. Yeah, I got another one of those little islands, don't we? So, um, yeah, I mean, for me, I, I'd probably, again, keep an eye on that 20. This this thing could sit there and consolidate for a little while as it, as it catches up to that. But yeah, I would say as long as it holds above that 100 level, um, you know, again, this is one that, that should have some momentum. I, I think it just needed to catch its breath a little bit after a, uh, that was a very, very big move higher. It had after earnings. I want to say it was like 20% or something. So I think long-term it's, it's a good setup. It, you know, probably just needs a little breather. All right, then we have Snowflake. The stock has gotten hit pretty hard. I know we we're talking about this off offline there, Brandon. Uh, this is a name that I had bought around the 200-day moving average post earnings, thinking that we we're going to get a nice bounce, and we've just bled through that. Um, but there's a few things that you were seeing today that did have your interest. Obviously, when you're looking collectively at the charts compared to the other ones, this is certainly the ugliest looking one. But um, what is it that you saw that uh, is kind of piquing your interest on the bullish side? Yeah, I mean, for Snowflake, I mean, it is very, very uh, oversold at this point. And you know, again, you've got the, the MACD, the histogram that's, you know, sloping upwards. Um, you know, it looks like it's possibly curling towards a bullish cross. Um, so, you know, again, those things are trending in the, the correct direction. Very solid day today. Um, you know, again, this is looking like a, a Marabozo candle at the moment. So no wick at the top or the bottom. And you know, one thing I like to look for after you have a stock that's had a, a really big down move like this, um, once it gets to a level like it is today where it reclaims that um, low or the close from yesterday, that can that can sometimes be a pretty good signal that we've hit at least a short term bottom. And we are seeing that today. Um, you know, I am watching it now and it's been getting bought up pretty well throughout most of the day. Um, so, you know, a lot of green candles, every time it kind of ticks down, it, it seems to tick right back up. Nothing earth shattering here on the options front. There is a slight elevation of call buying today. It, it's pretty minimal. So um, take that one with a with a, a grain of salt that it, it might not be the strongest sign. But um, I mean, a real nice trend today. And again, you know, even as I was just saying that, you know, they tried to dip it down and, you know, buyers have been stepping right in. So, you know, I, I think that this one, I, I saw an article recently that was put out by an analyst. Uh, I think he said that there was just like mounting problems at Snowflake. I mean, the company's still growing pretty strong. The new CEO came out and said that AI is going to keep him as busy as he could be for the next couple of years. So, yeah, like you said, um, from a, just a pure chart perspective, it is not the prettiest one out there. Um, but you know, it seems like kind of a, a short-term candidate here um, for a potential bounce. And they do have their presentation uh, tonight at NVIDIA. I don't know if it's a round table or how big of a discussion it is, but um, that is this afternoon. Yeah, so we'll be keeping an eye out on this one. Uh, Dell, another one that was mentioned prominently at 
uh, NVIDIA here. Um, this has been a pretty hot name the last few uh, weeks. Of course, had that pop following its uh, nice earnings report and guidance. But this one's come all the way back down to the 20. Now getting a little bit of a bounce off that. So really caught in uh, no man's land in that gap there. So uh, how do you view a chart like this, Brandon? And uh, what, what do you think of Dell with this test of the 20? Yes, that's kind of similar to um, my favorite post earnings setup. You've got that move and not not quite. It's kind of a deformed flag, if you will, but a little bit of a, a flag like pattern. You know, the last couple of days as it's um, been around the, the 20 day, you know, you you are seeing some wicks. You are seeing a little bit of an increase in volume. So, you know, in, in theory, this would be a pretty good bounce spot. Um, I don't like those three candles, though, from the 11th, the 13th and the 14th. Um, from quick glance here, that looks like a, a three black crows, which is not the, the greatest thing that you want to see on a chart if you're bullish. Um, but I do like this as as holding that area. It, it's kind of like you said, though, that that island in that gap makes me a little bit nervous because, you know, gaps act as as magnets. But, you know, again, we. We got the real nice move after earnings. You come down, you get the 50 RSI bounce. Um, you hold off of a major moving average. I know that this one too, I think has kind of caught the attention of, uh, you know, some of the some of the Reddit traders and stuff. So that always adds a little momentum, you know, for what this is worth uh, so far today, about 1.67 times normal call volume. So, you know, people, pretty low put call ratio too so you know people people seem pretty bullish on this one right now all right uh and two two names left adobe a d b e uh broke down below the 20 and uh 200 day convergence there following its earnings last week uh we always talk about never shorting adobe however that's not been the case the last uh uh four weeks or so, I guess five, six weeks, uh, as it's pulled back from 640 down to that uh, 500 level. You can see it got pretty close to the 200 weekly moving average at 478, but bouncing back a little bit this week. Obviously, again, another one being helped by NVIDIA the last two days. Yeah, I wouldn't have minded being short that. You know, I know we're not supposed to, <laughs> right. but uh, it's a hundred point short right there. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sometimes you can't. <laughs> never, um, never say never, as they say, right? Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, Adobe, they were featured a few times on the presentation uh, yesterday. Their name wasn't specifically mentioned, but their uh, their name was up on the, the presentation several times. I, I like this one coming into today just because of that pretty clean looking uh, candle from yesterday. You know, again, like I was talking about earlier, if you look at that candle yesterday, very little wick at the top. And, you know, here we are again today with an up day. It, it doesn't always happen that way, but, you know, it's definitely one thing that I look for. And yeah, it just seemed like a, like a good, um, oversold candidate and you know has a little bit of momentum from uh nvidia yeah you know, that that is a that is a tough chart that has taken a little bit of a dive so you're gonna have some selling pressure there but kind of that low from february 20th around the 528 area yeah you know, seems like it would potentially be a, a pretty good area for it to come back and test so you know again maybe a little bit of momentum um you know i'd be a, a little cautious on that one just because um you know that, that's a pretty nasty dive and it's moved what 160 points from uh, in just the last couple of weeks so yeah. you're gonna have some sellers lingering out there yeah some people that are stuck in the name for sure and uh last name uh, kind of a big departure from the tech-heavy look that we've been looking at. I think this is the only non-tech name. Uh, yeah, Johnson and Johnson, J N J. Another one with a bit of an ugly move here the last few days. It uh, rallied up to that 163 area. It's pulled back to 156, but as we can see, some solid support here going back to February. So, uh, what is it that in Johnson and Johnson that's peaking your interest? 
Boy, that does kind of look like a, a put candidate, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd say so. But, um, he, 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 you know, they did have that partnership with NVIDIA that they're talking about. But I just don't know if it's anything that's given them a notable advantage from what I was reading on it. Yeah, I mean, that almost looks like it had like a double top formation going back. I'm pulling out, a, looking at it the weekly here. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that two that two hundred weekly moving average just shutting down everything, right? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, this isn't this isn't textbook, but if you were to look at the move from the lows in November, you know, it comes up and it tests that one sixty two and a half area, comes into about right where it is right now at 156 and then it goes and tests that 162 and a half area again i mean again not textbook but it, it somewhat looks like a, a a double top and i mean it's sitting right on that neckline as as we're saying at that 156 area so you know you just had a bearish macd cross it actually looks like it's about to cross below the zero line your rsi is below 50 you're below all of the major moving averages um you know and it's in the the same etf as as unh which has obviously had some problems and, and put some pressure on so if it doesn't close or if it doesn't hold that 156 level, uh, I think that will make a pretty good little short candidate to, I don't know, maybe even go down to like 152 and a half, 150. All right. All right. That does it for our speed round here. So there's a lot of different trades and a lot of information that Brandon was throwing at you um there uh, this is being recorded so you will be able to go back and uh listen to some of these names we'll uh we have them all listed out in the order we went through outside of the course uh google and microsoft which we had discussed earlier in the session so uh hopefully some good trades out there for you to follow up on and uh naturally we'll be following brandon and his discussion here so uh next up brandon we want to roll over to this week's uh topic and we're looking at vix options here so uh there's a recent article out that uh had a analyst from goldman talking about cheap insurance right now and that piques your interest on it so uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the vix options and what you're seeing out there uh some you know backdrop for if people want to play this yeah and one last note on charts look at that nvidia back at 900 so uh, <laughs> that that didn't take long <laughs> no <laughs> so uh, um, they 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 love them some Nvidia, don't they? These they do. So. Up one point seven percent. I saw <laughs> Nvidia now is like twenty seven percent of the SMH too, um, which is lingering in uh, right around break even. So certainly would seem like Nvidia is doing some of the heavy lifting, and uh, some of the other components probably not enjoying as great of a day. Uh, yep. The Nasdaq here just kind of watching this. Uh, really tight trading range which has kind of been the case the last couple of sessions in the afternoon there hasn't been a lot of uh activity going on yeah and you wouldn't think there would be with the fed coming up tomorrow there's probably not right. too many people that want to jump in but you know hey <laughs> nvidia yeah. is at 900 after uh the move this morning so we could be wrong and we could shoot higher so i guess i guess we'll see right Right. No, I mean, I, I, I would be shocked if we don't see NVIDIA touch 1,000 at some point. Um, maybe, maybe we just need a rumor of a stock split coming out or something to get it going. But um, so let, let's talk a little bit, though, about this VIX trade here, just kind of keeping an eye out on the VIX. Um, it is rolling right around that 14 level. Uh shifting back to a daily you can see now for me brandon when i'm looking at the vix i don't really like um going off the moving averages so much in terms of hard uh like a hard read or hard trading level but i do like watching it more so from the trend and as you can see this is starting to move up slowly above the 50 above the 20 and challenging that 200 day moving average right now so 
what was it you saw in the article that um, kind of piqued your interest and in, uh, what, how are some of the ways that you'd look to play it? So I'll let you go through this and I'll just pepper you with some questions. Yeah. So as you, as you mentioned, um, I saw an article and that's what, what piqued my interest. So um, it had some commentary from, from Goldman and, you know, in quotes, it was investors should buy cheap portfolio insurance now before the stock market turns volatile. So they recommended that traders buy near-term VIX calls out of several potential event risks, uh, you know, such as the Fed. Um, they did also mention NVIDIA. Again, <laughs> with some of the movements, maybe take the NVIDIA thing with a, a grain of salt. Um, but they were predicting a move in the VIX to 28. So, you know, almost double the current levels. And they also pointed out that there's a seasonal trend that volatility typically rises in the spring. And in April, the VIX has averaged uh, 19 over the past 30 years. And again, like you just said, we we enter into this week in the, the 14 area. So, you know, when I, when I read this, I, I, I'm not trying to personally make this particular recommendation on whether this volatility is going to happen. You know, again, I... I remain pretty bullish myself. We'll see, you know, what Powell has to say tomorrow. But mainly just made me think, you know, a discussion around VIX options uh, would be a good idea. So uh, that's the backdrop on kind of what piqued my interest in, in what Goldman's saying. So, um, you know, just a, a little background on actual VIX options. So these are European style, so they can only be exercised at expiration and uh, options expire on Wednesdays. So you know, again, we've got things like the SPY and the, the queues that will have daily expirations available, but a little bit different in the sense that you, most of the time our options are expiring on, on Friday. So a little bit different there. Um, so, you know, VIX calls, you know, again, if, if you go in long VIX calls, these would typically pay off during periods when the markets suddenly drop. So, you know, options as a whole are going to benefit from quick moves. But in my opinion, and I would imagine that some others would agree with me that VIX options really seem to benefit from just the panic so you're really looking for the fear that's out there and you're really looking for the hard, fast fall in stock um, in order to, you know, really maximize your returns when it comes to trading VIX options. Sorry, you caught me. You caught me mid bite in there. <laughs> I, mean, I, I can keep talking if you want. No, to no, no. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, obviously you're talking about the, um, uh, Goldman article and uh, the prediction on the moves and some of the basics in terms of European style and everything. Um, when when you're buying the VIX uh, calls or puts, uh, is there anything in particular you're kind of looking at in terms of price ranges at all? Or um, when when when? And I guess the other question would be: when somebody's calling them cheap right now, is that what you're seeing on your boards too? Let me just check today's numbers here again. Yeah, I mean, showing the current IV percentile in Schwab at 57%. So, you know, not, not overly expensive, but also not overly cheap at the same time. Um, Has that gone up the last three three sessions with, um, I know you, I think you said on Friday, it was 3.4 times calls to puts. Yeah, so... Friday was 3.42 times normal call volume, and yesterday was about 2.45. And today, right now, we're at about two times. There's actually is um, that typical in front of a Fed meeting? I would I would think that a lot of people would kind of look for some downside protection just in case Powell says something. You know, I haven't studied it enough to to give a 100% answer on that. If I had to take a guess, I would say you're spot on. You know, it, it, that's that's the type of move, in my opinion, that you would want to see if you're trading the VIX. You know, th think about those days where Powell's come out and he's sounded, you know, hawkish. And, you know, the next thing you know, we're down two, three percent. Those are the types of moves that you that you really want to see. So, yeah, again, I haven't studied it enough, but my assumption would be that you are spot on in that analysis. 
All right. Well, uh, let's see. So you don't trade the VIX all that much, though, correct? I, I don't recall you ever saying that, um, take, taking the trade on the site. I have not. So um, I'll, I'll kind of jump Is there ahead. any particular reason why? Like, do you ever use it as a hedge? against you know obviously right now you have a a lot of calls out there um do you ever use it as as a hedge if you're starting to feel a little bit nervous about some of those calls or would you just prefer to wash clean the calls and move to the sidelines i'd rather just get rid of them and move to the sidelines that's just that's just how i tend to be a little bit better and again I've, i've talked about this a lot i and sometimes I stray from this a little bit, but I just tend to be better if I'm focused on either the call side or the put side. You know, if all of a sudden I end up and I've got a bunch of calls and a bunch of puts and then like a VIX option, you know, I, that's what keeps me up at night. I'm, I'm playing tug of war in my brain, trying to sleep of like, all right, is it going to be more beneficial for me for the market to get smoked or for it to, to rise? So um, for me... I, I just tend to do a little better if I just focus on one thing and, you know, I'll, I'll kind of jump ahead here in, in my notes to, or to answer your question. Yeah. So I have not traded the VIX. You are correct in quite some time. I've never thrown out the idea um, in the room. Um, you know, I traded it in the past as a young trader and I, I, frankly, probably wasn't experienced enough at the time to, you know, properly be trading it. So I I think I probably made the mistake of, um, you know, basically trying to catch things on like a Tuesday afternoon right now, you know, right before expiration. And I I just don't think that I personally traded it properly. Um, You know, it, it can get a little tricky you know the vix is a volatility index um you know it's working off of futures you've got some of the bigger institutional players and stuff in there so you know it it can sometimes be a a difficult thing to trade and you know for me i I just don't think i did it properly in the past yeah no there comes that thing if, if you don't feel comfortable trading an instrument why step out and do that right right step out of your comfort zone i feel like you're really good at that in terms of staying in your comfort zone and and uh just trading what you know as they say yeah and there's I, a, there's a lot to be said about that and i i always kick myself there's another thing that keeps me up at night is you know when i stray from from things these days that's what really just really annoys me i'm like why did, why did you do this brandon so um, I ask myself that on a daily basis. My problem is, you, you know, my task at hand is to kind of follow everything in the markets. <laughs> it, 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 it kind of puts too many shiny new items in my uh, in my mirror that I need to figure better ways of, uh, like like you do, just kind of whittling it down to those certain names that I trade. I think I'm getting better at it for sure, but, yeah, uh, but I mean- it's difficult, right? It is. And I mean, you know, we were talking about all those names from the NVIDIA event. Um, you know, as I told you, I was I was sitting out on the porch and I got my laptop up. I'm watching the keynote and I'm literally watching all of these stocks just spike. You know, algorithms pick them up and, you know, I'm like, oh, these are names I haven't traded before. And there's that temptation to go and chase them. And, you know, that's when I get out of my, my comfort zone. And, you know, some of those names in particular, they barely trade any options. So then you end up maybe forcing something on low liquidity. So yeah, it's, it's easier said than done. So, you know, that's really why I haven't traded the VIX and yeah, perfect example. Cause we're, we're here on a Tuesday. And again, these, these would expire in the morning. I'd be the type that I just all of a sudden go and I'd be buying the 14 and a half call as a young trader, inexperienced, and it just wouldn't work out for me. If I were to do something now, um, you know, I'd probably more go out, you know, call it three or four weeks that would encapsulate, you know, multiple events, um, the Fed. Um, maybe it's the beginning of earnings, maybe it's another jobs report, whatever it might be, to give myself multiple opportunities for that volatility. And, you know, I, I, I wouldn't go too far out of the money, but 
you know, I'd, I'd be looking a, a few strikes out and, and that's how I would personally treat it these days. Um, so just looking at it objectively, is there anything that would be jumping off the, uh, maybe not jumping off the page that, uh, you know, gun to head, so to speak, if you were to take the, um, this trade that you'd be looking at that look attractive, either pricing or just, you know, looking at a chart, historical data, however you would view it. I'd probably, in this particular case, I'd, I'd probably take some cues from, from Goldman's call. Um, you know, they say in 28, that seems like that's a pretty, pretty big move. And, you know, if you were in some calls, you'd, you'd do pretty well. So for me, and you'd be looking at April calls, I'm assuming, right? I would probably go out to the monthly expiration. So right. April 17th. So just for some quick perspective here. And, and now would, is, is the, the 17th, is that Wednesday then? Uh, it would be. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So just for some perspective, um, you know, if you look at the April 10th, 20 call, there's only been 80 contracts traded today. So go out a week to the 17th to the monthlies and on the 20 strike you've got 11,000 that are traded so you know i i would probably go where there is some volume and some activity and again i would go out probably a few weeks and i would probably quickly look at the 18 or the 20 strike and, you know, again, those are two of the more heavily traded. And, you know, I think that that kind of gives you maybe a good balance between, you know, the, the 14 and the 28 that Goldman's calling. And, you know, from there, too, if, if all of a sudden this play works out for you, you can always roll up your strike if you think the volatility is going to continue. All right. Uh, let's see. Anything that we missed on this uh have, have you run through the uh cash transfer i have not so i'll, okay. I'll jump into we'll that break so, that down for people yes yeah, so vix options um like other index options are cash settled so that means upon exercise there's a cash transfer from the seller of an in the money option to the option owner so in the case of VIX options, this involves $100 for each point that an option is in the money at expiration. So just a quick example, if you were the holder of a 15 call and the VIX moved to 20 at expiration, you would receive $500. So just your, your basic math would be 20 minus 15 gives you 5 times 100, and you get the $500 deposit into your account. Um, one thing to be aware of on VIX options is, as we mentioned, they stop trading at the close of the Tuesday before Wednesday's settlement. So, again, at you know four o'clock today or before that, because um, you can't trade after hours, they're going to stop trading today. But they don't actually settle until tomorrow. So again, that's that's a little bit different than than the other options. And due to the way that they are priced and settled, there can be some differences in the price that can catch you off guard, frankly. So in some cases, too, it might actually make a position go unexpectedly in the money. Now, that would be great if you were a call buyer, but not so much if you happen to be short the calls. So Personally, if I had a trade that was in the money and profitable and I had done well on it, I would just close it before the close on Tuesday. I would just take my money and I would move on to the next thing. And I guess the theme of today, we talked about things that would keep me up at night. You know, if that's kind of one more thing that you maybe have to worry about in the morning. So that's just personally how um, I would approach that. But definitely a little bit different. And I don't know, there's nothing worse than uh, starting off your trading day with uh, some sort of surprise at 930 in the morning. So um, that's just how I would approach it. All right. Um, anything else that we're missing uh, that we haven't discussed yet on this? No, I think I think that's it. I mean, I guess I would probably just 
say, you know, if anyone hasn't traded these before, I, I, you know, options are are tricky enough um, with some of the nuances. I would just make sure that you do a little extra studying on these. Um, you know, again, I'll admit, I, I frankly don't think I knew this when I did my first options trade on the VIX, you know, several years ago. I frankly don't think I was ever aware of that Wednesday morning settlement difference. So um, <laughs> those, those things can really not be fun. And especially if you happen to be shorting options and, and you're writing them. So that could create some very big surprises for you that you just don't want to deal with. Yeah. Yeah, no, that would certainly never like to get a surprise in your account the next morning where you're like, well, what happened there? <laughs> yeah, it's like my $300,000 worth of Beyond Meat shares that I've talked about before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, one of my earliest was when I first started trading options. Um, uh, it's one of the reasons why I don't trade options a ton is I forgot to carry a one or so in the math and uh, purchase 100 instead of 10 that I was looking to do. And next thing I know, I had a, like a $70,000 position. <laughs> I thought it was going to be 7,000. So that, that was a long day to say the least. But yeah, I mean, it's one of those things you just want to understand these instruments completely before jumping in and getting involved. So obviously really appreciate you taking the time, Brandon, to kind of go through and educate us on this. So we could have a fair understanding if there's an inkling to do this. Um, you know, you also have, of course, uh, the uh, VIX ETFs out there, if that's something that you're a little bit more comfortable in. But, um, you know, this is an area where we're probably going to want to keep in um, on focus just because of the seasonality. So, all right, Brandon, anything else before we let you go? No, I think uh, I think that just about covers it today. Awesome. Awesome. Well, a lot of good information out there, a lot of good trading ideas for people to digest. So if anybody's got any feedback on anything, feel free to write in. Uh, we're going to be shutting down audio here momentarily, and uh, we'll be getting back to our day job here and following the last hour and 15 minutes or so of the market. All right. Thank you, Gavin. I appreciate it. Thank you, Brandon. Always a pleasure and a great conversation here. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.